you know, I think there's even some conversation of is live streaming something that we still need to be doing in 2024 or 2025? Live streaming feeds your content. It is a content generation engine for the church. You have a service that so much time and effort is invested into uh, doing a great job for. And now that content can be repurposed and hit a totally different audience. Uh, with our live stream this last year, I pulled our stats for our member meeting this last week. In the last 365 days, um, we grew 133% on YouTube, which is we got 127,000 views on our, our church YouTube. And so we've seen a lot of wide reach, but also a lot of really narrow niche reach to our region. Everybody that walks through our door at our Next Steps class, it's extremely rare for someone to say, yeah, we did not check you out online. Utilizing content, reclipping things, all those different uh, techniques you can do, but it's just all an effort to try and spread the word wide, cast a wide net, but also uh, give people that front door picture of what it's like to come to Central. Hey, welcome back, friends and family to the BoxCast podcast. I'm Gary, your community manager. It's good to see you. Cannot wait to get into our next episode here. Uh, a familiar face that we're all very familiar with, Rylan Russell, the media and worship pastor out of Owasso, Oklahoma. We like to call him here at BoxCast the church budget king because he does such an amazing job by giving you some amazing ways of doing church tech on the cheap. And so with that... Um, He's got like some really awesome new videos out that are talking about comms and going into lighting and the mic stands he likes to use. Of course, how to do video, video editing. Um, he did one really cool video that I hope you go check out, which is a comparison on all of the new simple editing features out there like CapCut, um, Sermon Shots, Adobe Premiere. He did a really cool comparison video there. And with BoxCast having sharing out, um, hopefully we'll get him to do one of those too for us. But in the meantime, as you know, Rylan, it's great to have him back. Let's welcome him in. Rylan, welcome to the BoxCast Podcast. Good to see you again, man. Hey, Gary. It's great to be here, dude. Back for another one. First and foremost, man, there has been uh, some changes in your life, right? Like you've had a lot going on since we talked with you last year. Tell us about a little bit of those things that are occurring, man. What's happened? Well, it's, it's always a busy year, but uh, especially when you have three children and you're full-time at a church as a worship media arts pastor um, who is undergoing a full remodel of our worship center that we're preparing for. So all of that chaos. And then, yeah, my YouTube channel, um, God's really been blessing it and just providing a lot of opportunities there and getting to go to different conferences, actually uh, headed out soon to another one in Chicago. And so I'm excited to just honestly get to meet people that I never would have thought I'd get to meet and learn so much more from them. I'm just this guy from Owasso, Oklahoma that decided to start kind of documenting my worship leading journey. And it's cool to see how God has really blessed it. I, I enjoy watching your Sunday vlogs. Now, I, I don't mind the tech videos and I don't mind the tip videos and I don't mind the how to's. I think those are all great. I think a lot of the people who watch those have the same feelings as I would like. These are awesome. You know, like we talked about that last year when you had you on for the first episode. Like, yeah, you got some good stuff. I, I like your Sunday vlog because you bring a fresh, real approach to the Sunday vlogs and you're thinking and talking about what I'm thinking and talking about, especially with my wife as well, who's our worship and, and arts director. Um, so it makes a lot of sense. But, you know, you, you we talked in our last podcast about expectations as a worship leader, as a church leader and overcoming those struggles and then how to maintain those things. Um, so I guess my first question for you now is like, what has become kind of the front runner in your life and in your ministry to help you kind of become that leader? Right. But also, what is it doing to help continue you know, uh, amidst all of your, you know, upward trending success, like, you know, as a ministry leader, as a YouTuber, as a father, mm. like what are some of the four front running things in your life that you've brought forward that you're now seeing as those drivers to help make that, that continuation to con continue progressing? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I've heard it said that leaders, great leaders are learners. And, um, that has been something that I've really been trying to pour into. And, you know, I was worried at one point that the YouTube channel was going to actually maybe make my life a little bit harder being a full-time worship and media arts pastor. But mm. I really think that it has benefited me so much because it's forced me to be 
a learner and I'm always just trying to learn what is the newest thing? How can we do something better? How can we tweak something? How can I be a better leader, a worship leader, whether that's uh, reading books and blogs or listening to podcasts or even these conferences that I've been to, man, have been such a blessing. Like, yeah, I get to do my little breakout session talking about live streaming <laughs> on a budget, but then I get to learn from these these people who have so much more experience and and really can just help my ministry uh, as a side benefit. And right. that's been really cool. So um, just yesterday, we went with my tech director to do two different church tech tours. And we left that just like thinking, wow, like there's so many things that we we can maybe try or adjust. And it's just kind of inspiring to get to do that. And, you know, we document it for the YouTube channel along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You'd hired a tech director because I remember now seeing him in the video. So that's pretty dope. You hired a tech yes. director at the church. That's cool. It's amazing. I, I had a worship intern for a while. That was kind of the baby step in the front door there. And uh, now he's up to 25 hours a week. And uh, wow. it's such a blessing because... You know, I was programming every light cue, every pro presenter slide, anything and everything that had to do with worship and media. And now I've been able to release some of that to him and yeah. he is training other people. And so we're just trying to keep that ball rolling. Yes, absolutely. Well, I mean, and the funny thing is like, because I mean, in some of your Sunday vlog videos, I see you coming in at like 4.48 a.m. <laughs> it's not that early. <laughs> 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 it is dark, but it's like 6 a.m., yeah. Are you sure, man? Because it looks like you're there at 4 a.m., and I'm like, dude, listen, if I had to go... I actually all film that stuff, everything at 9 p.m., and then I just put the, the timestamp as 4.40 a.m. No. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, nobody knows the difference, right? At that right. point, it's like... So have you relinquished some of the... Like, I mean, that's a forerunning thing. Like, I mean, your time is a valuable asset. I'm learning that in my own business, too, and in BoxCast and family, like... Time is a valuable thing. Like it's it's clockable, and because it's clockable, so are you seeing that you're seeing that return on that ROI come back in with the the tech director being hired? You're seeing that time come back to you, and you're able to then take that extra learning step now. Or, um, yeah, I think you fill your time with any spare time you have. You fill it with whatever you want to fill it with. Whether right. you know, I could work seventy hours a week here if I wanted to. Sunday mornings, I'm always going to come in at 6 a.m. because my most recent mm -hmm. vlog, I talked about what fuels my nightmares as a worship pastor. Yes, you did. And that is the nightmare that I have recurring is that the countdown has 30 seconds left and everything is breaking. All the technology <laughs> is failing me. You know, computers are fried, pro presenters crash, like people are missing, like, and that's what fuels my <laughs> nightmares because I've had those real experiences where you come in on a Sunday and you have to get out the little giant ladder because your projector won't come on mm. uh, or your light board is fried or the church is flooded. And so I force myself to get up and get here that way, just in case something is bad, you know, me as the leader, I can go ahead and start to remedy that. And I don't have mm -hmm. to freak out at the last minute if something is wrong. Now, having the tech director is great. One of my new goals this year for our worship ministry, we're actually beginning the songwriting process as a cool. team. So I've got some really talented songwriters um, that are a part of our team. And we've and I've written and recorded albums, you know, in the past. And it's just a part of our worship life that we really haven't had time uh, or really haven't invested into together. And so we've been able to begin that and we've already written a, a couple songs together. And it's been it's been a really enriching part of of uh, my year so far. And so I'm looking forward to leaning into that That's more. That's really cool, Rylan. That's really cool. I mean, your guys' worship sounds incredible online. Like, I mean, I yes, I do watch, so I do listen to it because it's incredible. And we try to mimic that in my church from a little bit from time to time. So it sounds incredible and it looks Thank incredible. You, and I've you're doing a, a phenomenal team. job. Yes, you do, man. You really do have a great team. I mean, yeah. we, we talked about that. Yeah, it's all volunteer based, which is crazy because, I mean, you told me earlier before in our pre-setup stuff that you have four, four audio mixers, uh, engineers. Yeah. For audio engineers, it can be a blessing and a curse because you know everybody kind of has their uh, their way of doing things. But I do give them a sandbox to play in, and they're well trained. Yeah. Um, but they are the most important person in your band, and so they really are. If you yeah. don't just throw anyone in there, don't throw the guy in there that's like, "Hey, I used to DJ." Well, okay, that doesn't mean that you're an <laughs> expert at mixing live audio. Um, now that person may be great. I'm not saying that they just make sure they're trained and uh, that you're setting expectations for people of uh, what you want it to sound like. And I'm, I'm really lucky though. We've got a, a great 
crew. We have about on a monthly basis, I have about 45 different people that serve on our between our wow. worship and media teams. So wow. we, we have enough now that we can cycle people in and out. And, you know, life's crazy. People got kids that are getting sick or whatever happens. So, um, yeah, stacking that volunteer base is super important. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Well, listen, cent- you listen, you heard it here first, Central Worship Live. It's coming to you. Spotify playlists, they're coming out, man. I'm, I'm excited for that, Ryland. That's going to be great. Let's go. Let's go. Central Worship Live. I don't think a band is called Central Worship at all, so... Maybe well, maybe Central that. Las Vegas is called Central Worship, so we'll have to think of something else. Maybe Central Creative. We're kind of thinking about that. Go buy the domain, get it done. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, let's jump into a few more couple of cool questions. So you talked about that, and this is great. This is a good segue, Rylan. Like you talked specifically about having your volunteers, and we talked about managing expectations as a leader. But you talked about in one of your videos. You talked about implementation of systems. And what really caught me off guard in that video, and I was a little unnerved by it at first, and then I realized how important it was, but you have this monstrosity of a chalkboard (laughs) with these magnetic, magnet paper holder, like bubble things. I don't even know what to call them. And it's yes, no, right? Like, I mean, you're just moving it over. You talk about system implementation. What like seriously man what give us an idea here of what that looks like like why cho- why choose to move in that kind of direction but overall <laughs> like what makes you revamp or scrap or even start a system yeah i've gotten so many questions about that little chalkboard it's so funny um and it's sometimes the simplest tool is actually the best tool mm-hmm. you know i'm a big fan of using, uh, you know, list apps or to do things like, uh, my favorite is to doist and, uh, you know, Apple reminders and things that are based on GPS. And cause I'll forget, I'm just a forgetful guy. And so definitely love using those, but I just realized that week in and week out, we have so many things to do on a Sunday morning that you just sometimes can forget that random thing. And so for us, I just bought us a, uh, which it had to be black to blend in with our, our media booth because it's all blacked out. And yeah. then just some magnets and uh, and paint pen and just put the essential, like, let's not forget these things. When you do it, slide the magnet over. And at the end of the day, we'll go in reverse and turn everything back off. And that's everything from did you, you know, change the, the name of the encode uh, for our live stream to did you turn on this camera? Did you change the batteries in the roaming? You know, so because, man. There are so many things to do on a Sunday morning and the more systems you can put in place to, you know, lower your failure rates, I think is a very wise thing. And the other part of that is I don't want to have to be working every single Sunday out of the year. So, Mm. you know, if you have systems in place, then you can train people and it's not just living in Ryland's brain of how I do (laughs) things because that's not going to work long term. So, so, so. Talk to me about about your system implementation a little bit. Like, what gets you like? What got you started? Like, not just because you wanted to like lower your failure rate, but like, how do you go about a system implementation? Like, how did you do that? Like, we saw I, obviously you saw a need, right? And you're like, ah, we got to remember how to do this. And Google Maps and you know Apple Maps on my phone is not going to make me remember to do all of this. But when you go into implementing a new system, because I mean, at some point, too many systems makes the system fail. So. Mm. Where, where where do you draw the line on that? Like, where is that? Like, where and how would you go about doing that? Like, give some of the people who are watching and listening to this a little bit more of an idea about system implementation. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll talk to you about maybe our system of volunteer recruitment. If that oh, that's works. a good one. Yeah, that's you know, a great because one. I think that that's a struggle point or um, sometimes can be a choke point of our ministries. And mm-hmm. it's just how do we onboard people? So. For instance, I'll talk about our band specifically. How do I onboard somebody that wants to be a singer on our worship team? Well, if you're at a small church and somebody comes up to you after service and says, hey, I'd love to volunteer to be a part of your worship team, you may be so desperate that you're just like, yes, thank you, Lord. This is <laughs> this is uh, God's providence right here. Right. Uh, but, you know, for us at our size, uh, we are, what I've learned is it's a lot easier to tell someone no in the beginning than it is to remove them from your team Mm. afterwards. So I said, here's our system. So for vocalists and band people, this is how we do it. I say, that's great. Uh, I'd love to sit down with you and have coffee. If this is somebody who's newer to our church, and that's the first thing we do, we go out. I just want to get to know them. 
hear their story, hear their testimony. Yeah. Who are you as a person? Like, I care more about who you are than what you can do for me and our ministry. And so let's do that. And so a lot of times doing that, you learn a lot about somebody. You learn yeah. about their faith background, maybe how they've served, maybe church hurt that they've experienced in the past. Um, and that opens a lot of doors for conversation. And if it's something that it's like, okay, let's move to the next step from here. Uh, we do everything with virtual auditions to start with, with everyone. Uh, so that is the first step. Before that, it, I have a hard and fast rule that you have to be a member of our church for six months and be mm -hmm. getting into a small group and all those kinds of things. So that way there is kind of like a, hey, let's get you plugged into the church before you start serving right. the church necessarily uh, from the platform. So we do virtual auditions. I like doing those because it's not like me as Simon Cow sitting there, like listening to them. <laughs> like, will I turn the chair? I don't know. Um, so <laughs> the voice they can, they can, re re they can re record it as many times as they want, send it oh over, my. and then I can sit in the comfort of my office and actually listen and uh, you know evaluate accordingly. And then I always give follow up feedback. Um, if if they're not ready, if they're not a fit, we talk about that. I give them if a lot of people. That I've had audition. It's like, man, you're you're close, but you're not quite there yet. Here's some here's some uh, tools that you can use. I want mm -hmm. you to get involved in our planning center and be in there and rehearsing on your own. And let's try this again in six months. Some people make it to the next step, and that is, hey, okay, now let's come to rehearsals. Let's have a buddy that you're going to kind of shadow for a while. They're going to teach you how to do the systems. They're going to teach you how to use the inner packs. You're not even going to sing on the platform yet. You're just coming to rehearsals. And then eventually we will uh, get you in the mix of doing things. Now there's other parts to that, depending on what instrument you play. If you're a vocalist, uh, right. we might do some harmony training to see if you're a good fit actually once you do that audition process. So that that's all to save me from having to just make a split second decision or, or not really having criteria uh, for how I onboard people and I have goals every year that I set with my pastor about how many people I'm going to try and onboard in our tech teams in our worship ministry because it's just like our churches there is a back door people move people leave and if you're just adding as many as that leave you're not growing and so um, we're trying to be thoughtful and the other way that I do that is just by having um, open houses for our tech ministry and our worship oh, okay. ministry where, where there's no commitment. Just come in and see how we do things. And if you're interested, you know, we'll talk. Yeah. Wow. Man, I mean, that's uh, that's a lot, bro. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a, lot. a lot. And but obviously you see a need. Yeah, totally necessary. Absolutely. Well, I mean, but you obviously see a need there because you were either getting way too many requests or you are wanting to fulfill the opportunity for ministry for people to get it plugged into a ministry who are not necessarily already plugged in. So, I mean, there's a lot of aspects. So in that side of systems, um, what makes you like, what makes you feel like when a system is crashing and failing, it's time to abandon it? Well, <laughs> I mean, since this is BoxCast, uh, I could talk about failures that we've had recently with live streaming. <laughs> you knew I was going there, Rylan. I mean, you knew we had the conversation that you knew it was coming, so you might as yes, well just we take it. <laughs> well, yeah, if you've watched my channel at all, you know that I, I share tons of tips and tricks for live streaming your services and broadcasting. And uh, for us, I'm very much of the opinion, like, if something isn't broken, I don't have time to fix something that's not broken unless it's really going to change the game for us. You and 90% so of churches, Ryland, 90% okay. of churches have the same feeling. So it's okay. I understand. Okay. I completely get well, it. I, I think it's wise that they're, they're smart people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in the last month and a half, we've had a lot of issues. It, it's really, oh, I still don't know what's wrong, but we were live streaming uh, just through our ATIM stuff. Uh, with a web presenter HD. It worked great for years. And then we upgraded stuff on our network uh, to unify stuff. And it's been nothing but fits. And finally, uh, I was like, all right, Gary, I got to try out VoxCast. And uh, we did it for the last uh, first time last Sunday. And it worked like a charm. It was great. So, well, we're, we're, we're glad that you're utilizing the services. We're glad that it's working so far for you. So I'm, I'm happy to have you on board, man, whatever we can do to make that better. But yeah, so you abandon a system when it, 
at, at least in my viewpoint, you're abandoning in a system when it's completely failed, like, and there's no recovery that's going to be super costly or super time consuming. Yeah, I mean, we have um, upgrade path plans and all those kinds of things for our major technology pieces. We actually mm -hmm. implemented a deferred maintenance budget this year uh, specifically for broadcast because, mm -hmm. you know, if most churches, if you're like me, you don't just have like a sugar daddy that's like, here's 50K <laughs> to go redo your systems every seven years. You have to plan for that. You know, like cameras get old, switchers get old, and... Uh, you have to have a plan in place so you're not having to beg for a, a big nest egg of money in you know, every six or seven years. Um, and so we do have that, and that is a good thing. Um, but, you know, for in this instance at least, it's like, man, I changed one thing, so it's got to be something simple. Like I just have a button clicked wrong somewhere, right? Right. And then the whole thing of like, oh, it streams great during the week, but then Sunday hits and something is not right. So, you know what, I just, I think we need fiber. We need one gig up and down probably. I just need to convince <laughs> our business administrator of that. I think that's the yes. answer. Let's flip the, let's flip the, the gears a little bit here. You know, no more fun, no more fun, Ryland. We're done talking about fun stuff. Let's talk about some things that I'm seeing happen with not only your YouTube content, but also with uh, your church's content, right? And some things that I've seen uh, in our world today, like where we're going. So 2024, uh, some have, well, I'll put it this way. I've dubbed you the church budget King. You've done it so well, right? And you've done all of these things so well, and you're implementing systems and you're implementing pieces of technology and services that are all fitting extremely well together. Some of them that aren't meant to fit well together are doing so. Um, you know, but the, the question is like, we're seeing a major shift in 2024 for church culture being primarily driven by content, right? You're seeing content consumption up. Um, I think the last numbers I saw was like, I think it was like 78% of people, church church users, church people are engaging in more content, um, whether it be through social media or YouTubes or even, you know, through, through Twitters or whatever the spaces are, you know, X's, YZ's, whatever they are. Um, but that's a lot of people consuming a lot of content and we're starting to see a culture change for churches where that's actually churches are becoming more aware of that. So I guess what I want to, I want to know from you is where do you like see that? Like, what do you see as a primary driver? Because I know your church is engaged in a lot more content recently. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys are doing really, really well on that front. But so what is a primary driver that you see? This is a change in the, what, how the church is focused, especially when I, you know, when we talk about outreach and engagement pieces. Yeah, you know, I think there's even some conversation of is live streaming something that we still need to be doing in 2024 or 2025? Mm -hmm. Was that a thing for COVID? Do we really need to still be investing in this? And I think that it really is the idea that live streaming feeds your content. It is a content generation engine for the church. You have a service that so much time and effort is invested into uh, doing a great job for, and now that content can be repurposed and hit a totally different audience throughout the week. You know, yes, we've really leaned into producing short form content and we've seen, uh, a lot of traction streaming on YouTube, uh, with our live stream this last year, I pulled our stats for our member meeting this last week and the last 365 days, um, we grew 133% on YouTube, which is we got 127,000 wow. views on our our church YouTube. And so we've seen a lot of wide reach, but also a lot of really narrow niche reach to our region. Everybody that walks through our door at our Next Steps class, it's extremely rare for someone to say, yeah, we did not check you out online. Mm -hmm. Most of the people are saying, man, yeah, we've, we came across your live stream or we've been watching for months. You know, some of these people, I call them lurkers. They just <laughs> lurk. They just, they just tune in. They never even tell you they're there. They're not, they're not in the chat participating, but then they eventually just show up. Um, and so we've grown on YouTube. It's been great. Uh, our short form content is doing great on Instagram. And that's one of my goals this year is our target 
our target audience for our church is the user base mainly of, I feel like, Instagram, that young family demographic. Yes. That's the culture of our city is that 20 to 40-year-olds that have kids. That's the largest demographic in our city, and so that's who we're really trying to target and reach. Um, and so utilizing content, reclipping things, all those different uh, techniques you can do. I've tried a lot of little gimmicks, and uh, some of them work, some of them don't. But it's just all an effort to try and spread the word wide, cast a wide net, but also give people that front door picture of what it's like to come to Central. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. That is something that we are seeing as a major like contributing factor to why churches are moving to specific places in the content space. So, Rylan, with, within that, though, like how does that affect like church leadership in their decision making? Well, I think that something that a lot of church leadership is dealing with, especially pastors, when I talk to our pastor, is how does a pastor really get involved online? I think most pastors, not all, most pastors see the benefit of getting involved online, but not all of them are wired to do that. And right. I think that having the ability to give your pastor a voice on your social media by reclipping his sermons and doing different things like that allows him to not have to be this social media guy who's like struggling with like, like how much do I actually share of my life? Like, is this weird or, you know, so that's been huge for us. And um, I mean, our pastor delivers great messages every week that are super applicable for someone that w it will stop their scroll and it will help them somehow. And uh, so I have that great benefit. I know what he's going to preach, you know, weeks in advance. I have his right. outlines, you know, days in advance where I can kind of pre-plan like, oh, this is going to be, this is quotable, a quotable quote. Um, and so those are great things. But I think leadership, um, you know, Kerry Newhoff has some great articles that could probably be thrown to them about the importance of uh, your online presence. Um, I just think stats don't lie. I mean, it's where people are spending their time. Uh, I think the days of really forcing people to get inside the church building um, is is probably short-sighted to mm -hmm. think that we can't do discipleship, we can't reach people and have community online. Now, I'm not going to say that uh, r real community, people are starving for it, right? That's They, yes. can, they can get yeah. a great sermon, they can get, get great music anywhere, but uh, when they step through your front door, you better have a plan for how you're going to get them connected, because that's why, that's a big reason why people are oh, yeah. stepping through your front door. Right, absolutely. Well, I mean, they see the, especially if you're doing it, I don't want to say correctly. Let's say you're not, it's not about doing it correctly. It's more about doing it, um, it's, it's more about just doing it, where if you're presenting not only the gospel, right? You're not just presenting, you know, your worship. You're not just presenting the message or the pastor or the the atmosphere, but you're presenting the people. The connection becomes a little more uh, fluid, and the ability to make that connection when somebody enters into your church. I, I know for our church specifically, um, when we started live streaming, we saw a huge increase in visitor attendance because of the fact that we had people going onto our website or going into our YouTubes and seeing us and being like, that looks like a church that cares about me and my family. And they want to, they want to cater to, to my needs as a, an individual or as a family unit. And so we saw a huge increase in our, in our visitors and that, that drove us to have to figure out what do we do about that? Like, because then, then you have to worry about retention. Like, how do you, how do they come back? Like, how do you feed them back in so that way they feel more connected? Like, what do you say to somebody when they're there? Like, who presents to them? Like, there's a whole slew of things that are just a system that has to be implemented into that process. And you share with it so easily, Rylan, about, you know, some of those things. But we talked about the systems. Like, how, how hard is it, though, to, because, I mean, think about some of the churches in America right now. Like, they're not your size church, right? In fact, they're not even my size church. Um, the, the demographically, they're under a hundred, you know, they're under a hundred people and they have one person managing, you know, their church. And then they got a part-time bookkeeper and they got a part-time janitor. And, you know, like, there's no, like, there's, there's some guy who's not even working as a, as a paid person. They're just there. So like, how, 
would you see this being something somebody could go in with like limited knowledge, limited budget? Like mm. where should they start? Like just to yeah. get it going. I think if we're talking about live streaming your services, I, that's one of the main reasons I think that uh, it is so valuable for the church at large, no matter what size of church you are. Now, if you don't have good content, then, you know, there's really not much reason to broadcast. But even, you know, I, I worked at a church that was less than 100 people for a few years, and our pastor delivered great messages. And if I was that church, that's how I would start, would just get one camera, live stream your your sermon, and then reclip it throughout the week. And uh, you don't have to have some crazy setup to do that. And the great thing about live streaming is that you do it while you're already at church, and then it's done. You're not having to film something and then edit it through the week. You know, there's tools and back ends of these different services. I know that Voxcast has some of those tools to where you can trim things down and re-export them out, and it just saves you a lot of time in your workflow. And so I think that no matter what the church size, there is benefit there because uh, every church is unique for a reason. Every pastor has a different voice for a reason, and uh, you never know um, who you might reach by s just sharing that online. And I think that the struggle that churches are having is what is success digitally? Yes. Is success when people see our service and then come to our church? Yes, that, uh, that is success. Mm -hmm. But is that the goal for you? Is right. it still a success? If our watch time this last year on YouTube was over 7,000 hours, but only a handful of those people actually ever stepped foot in our door. Right. Well, then people start struggling with, well, how do we disciple people that are just watching a service? You know, I, I think seeds are planted in different various ways. Um, and we're not a church that's large, Gary. Like, I want to remind people... You know, this last Sunday, I think we had 460-something people here. So we're not a mega church by any no, means. No, no, no. My budget is $11,000 for technology. So uh, we're still working on a budget. But I think it's a long game that you need to think back, like, what's our why? What do we want our broadcast to eventually be like? And then take baby steps to get there. So don't just run out and buy whatever is, you know, the latest thing. Like, right, really think yeah. about... What do we want our broadcast to look and feel like? We only have maybe $5,000 we can invest in it this year. Well, let's start putting the pieces in place for the long game. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's good advice. It's good positioning to understand that, you know, and we're not just talking about live streaming. We're talking about content in general, right? I mm. mean, you know, where, where, you know, where do you start? But it's good positioning. And I, I it's funny because I was reading some things. There's a guy named Pat Flynn. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Pat Flynn, um, but he's uh, he has this um, very interesting podcast as well as a company where it's simple passive income is what he calls it. And um, he talks about, you know, where you should start. And he says one of the things about people who don't typically jump into this is that they don't know where to start. And that's because they just don't start. And he's like, that's where sure. you start. He's like, that's where you begin. You just start. And he's, yep. he recommends just starting with a simple YouTube video making the video. And he said, um, and the one thing that got me, and this is like, you know, helpful, not only in the church space, but in my business and in my family is like, make your focus by helping one person. Yeah. That's it. Make your focus one person. And then from there, work that through. Like, how can you help that? And what you're suggesting is the simple fact that even if we're talking about live streaming, you've already started because you were live streaming. And yep. all you now need to do is get the tool or the piece of the puzzle that would make that even easier by breaking that video down and creating a sharing clip or breaking it down into something simpler, you know, and yeah. you had a really good video um, where you, I like to call it your judgment videos. Like you're judging, like you use like, Hey, live stream judging. Right. But uh, you also did this with CapCut, sermon shops, a uh, sermon, sermon shots and Adobe premiere. And you broke down quite simply like the benefits and the detractors for each one of those services and how they work, even giving a little overview as the piece. And so you find, you know, there's free tools out there that make it even mm -hmm. easier. Boxcast gives you sharing, by the way, that's what you were referencing is our new sharing feature that's out, yep. um, you know, where we can take your video from your broadcast and turn it into a shareable clip. The idea though is like, just start, right? Yep. Just start. Anyway, man, all that to say, there's, there's some things about, uh, church leadership and decisions that are 
sometimes perplexing and other times um, straightforward, but then there's a whole lot of gray in between. And when it comes to your church, my church, and our friends who are watching churches, the idea here is that it's all about one thing. It's not about us. It's always about him. And so we have to continue to press the gauntlet with whatever we can, especially in the emerging church culture where we're starting to see this not only in church culture, but also in like, you know, um, other circles like business culture, you know, personal culture, all these things are happening where content is going to become king and getting to that content is going to be an important piece. So one last question about that. Where do you see AI playing a major factor in this for you? Well, as far as social media, uh, you know, AI is like the hot topic right now. Um, I think there's going to be great tools that we can utilize in our tech ministries for people that don't maybe have the abilities that were once required mm. for us. Like the last two sermon series uh, graphics that we've developed, I just used generative fill or actually one of them. It's, it's crazy. One of the stock images I got off Adobe stock was actually a AI generated stock image. You saw that too? You saw those? Did you see the category I listing on that? One. Yes. Isn't one. it crazy? Isn't it nuts? And so, um, but even just yesterday, I, I, I searched for a long time for something that would fit what we were looking for. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to type in what I think I want. And after a few prompts, like got it going and then just kind of, you know, adapted and expanded and used generative fill and uh, it's, it's, it worked well. And so that's one mm -hmm. way we're using it. We've used those to generate, you know, different backgrounds for video announcements and things to where, you know, churches that don't have a great setup or maybe like this bougie lobby that has like cool wood walls in it. Like you can kind of make it work and have a, a, a nice setup by right. using AI to do those different things. Obviously AI, a lot of people are trying to use it for clipping and, and using these uh, creating short form content. It's really just like, how can you do, how can you make my job easier, my life easier, perform a task uh, in a quicker um, manner than I could myself? You know, I, I don't have time to scrub through 45 minutes of a sermon. Maybe, maybe AI can help me find those key moments somehow right. as I'm clipping up the sermon. So I think we're probably on the tip of the iceberg. Um, soon we will just have like AI worship leaders like I won't even need to be up there. Um, you know, I'll just like be back in the back, like telling chat GPT, you know, like what to do and that's awesome. the robot on stage will no, that's awesome. ever have to need waves tune or anything like that. It's done. We're starting a new business. No, it's done. It's, I, I like this. I, in fact, as soon as you said that, all I could think of of you is using generative fill in the worship service and just AIing <laughs> yourself. Hey, just yeah. draw a selection box, generative fill guy with beard, Long hair, wearing guitar, playing yes. worship music, hands in the air, well lit. That's it. Enter. <laughs> there there yes. he comes. There's Absolutely. a Rylan Russell standing right there. I love it. All of I our church it. photography pictures, like we'll be using AI to like fill it in with tons of people. Like, look how many people were at our church on Sunday. Yeah. No, the struggle's real, man. And sometimes I wish the struggle bus had a subscription policy so I could cancel. But hey, whatever it is, man, the struggle can be real for everything. But hey, Ryland, we're at our time and I, I enjoyed our conversation today, man. Thank you again so much for joining me today. Always a blast, Gary. Dude, you're a joy to get to talk to. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you as well, man. Hey, listen, if you are interested in looking up anything about Rylan, his YouTube channel, help it explode. Let's get to 20,000 by the end of May and June and July. Go check out the link down in the description below. If you're interested in BoxCast and you're wanting to see what we're all about, well, I got a really cool thing for you. Go to BoxCast.com. We got some new plans. We got this awesome new sharing feature that Rylan was just talking about and how we can help you take your content that you're already streaming and clip it out so you can do the sharing pieces. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And of course, as always, happy streaming.